So I know this is a book review channel, but I haven't read as much lately. So I'm gonna talk about TV shows instead. I watched 171 shows in the past seven years and I made a list and I recorded. I noted down every show that I've ever watched from the first episode to the last episode. It bothers me a lot if I don't finish them. Even if I decide that I hate them midway, I still finish them. I, I just have to. I can put myself through that torture. Yeah, I've watched probably like, what, seven seasons of uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. I liked it and then I hated it and then I kind of made peace with it and I liked it <laughs> because I was too used to it. I'm just gonna rely on my memory from the past seven years and what I remember on the show. That might not be accurate all the time. My impressions might be wrong. It was personal, of course. I'm also gonna be rating them. I'll be nice to them, I promise. watch like in seven years more shows than I watched my entire life. I don't finish them. <laughs> you you don't really review shows, right? No, I, I, it's too much, it's too much concentration, too much time spent. I would rather watch a movie. This one, pretty funny. Each episode is like 20 minutes. It's a comedian, Jerry Seinfeld, who was in Seinfeld, the main character, goes out with other comedians in LA and they have coffee and they talk about things. And it's usually funny, you know, like a afternoon quick episode or two, it works. 6.5. The Colony is a weird show. It's a science fiction show and it's basically, the plot is that the US is overtaken by invading aliens. You never get to see the aliens. It's only about these rebels that fight against the humans that work for the aliens. I think it has like two or three seasons, not very developed, and it's kind of small, like few characters, action is kind of limited, six. This one is weird. It has two seasons, I think. Jude Law is a national treasure, international treasure. He plays the Pope here, a Pope that is very young, unusually young. So he becomes, by some internal plotting, he becomes a pope. He's a very conservative pope. He doesn't show his face to anyone in the world. He's very cool, actually. I liked him in this role. I just liked the character and how he played it. That made the entire show for me. I would say seven. Underground is about a network of uh, abolitionists in the United States who are freeing slaves in the South and transporting them to the North. For me, because we didn't learn about this in school, it was almost historical, 6.5. The Last Panthers I don't remember that much on, and that's usually a bad sign. It's about these um, criminals from Serbia that plan to steal diamonds in the UK or something. Since I don't remember it, I think it was just a few episodes, I'm gonna give it five. Means it's not memorable. Childhood's End is a very good show. It's a mini-series, it has a few episodes only. After this really great book by Arthur C. Clarke. It's a super advanced race of aliens coming to govern Earth and show us our true purpose in the universe. It gets very deep in the ending. I recommend it. If you read the book and you loved it, you will like the show as well. Point how many? 7.5, yeah. Saints and Strangers is about colonists that reached America and how they interacted with the natives. It's again just a few episodes, a mini series, six. The Nick is really great. Uh, it's about a surgeon in 1910 or 1920s in the United States. And it's about how the surgeons operated initially. So uh, they didn't even have blood transfusion yet. And the surgeon, who is interpreted by this really great actor, he's addicted to cocaine, to cocaine. And then he gets addicted to heroin to cure that addiction of cocaine. It's a really great drama. I would say eight. And this show is uh, unique, actually. It's one of the few shows that I've seen delving into this Egyptian kind of history. Let's say... Six. This one is very topical with the pandemic and all. It's about how a virus starts to spread among this team of uh, researchers at a base in the Arctic, I think. It's pretty gory. It's pretty brutal. It's also fun to watch. Seven. Lily Hammer. The main character is played by Steven Van Zandt. You can only appreciate this TV show after you've seen The Sopranos, because in The Sopranos, he plays this mobster lieutenant. In Lily Hammer, he plays a mobster lieutenant who testifies against the mob and has to go live in Norway. And the show is about how he integrates in Norway, how weird it is to see this New York mobster, but it's a comedy, so he, he doesn't turn violent again, and when he does, it's, it's comedic almost. Seven. Peaky Blinders, I, I don't know, the review would be endless. Main character, amazingly cool. I want to dress like him. I want to be him. If you haven't seen it, you should really see it. I think it's six seasons by now or something like that. I'm going to give it a 10. Under the Dome is after a book or a series of books, I'm not sure, by Stephen King. A dome 
is placed over that town. It's just kind of the effects of a dome and what it does to the residents of that society. And they turn violent, they have to face these natural disasters. But still, I didn't like it very much. It was kind of cheap, 5.5. The killing is one of the best crime thriller TV shows I've seen. You know, the tough lady detective, it's a cliche by now because you see it in many, many TV shows. But for me, this was the first instance. It's very interesting, it keeps you on edge. It takes place in Seattle and it rains all the time. So it gives you that like noir, Nordic kind of crime TV show. And it's great, 7.5. Magic City didn't get the chance to develop too much. Uh, the main actor also plays a big role in The Walking Dead. I forgot his name, the one with the bat. It's really great to see him as a mobster in Florida somewhere, I think it is. Again, it didn't get the chance to lift off its feet. It has like one or two seasons. It's very short, I would say seven. Newsroom is really great. It's one of a kind. It has this amazing scene with the main character who basically says that the US is not the greatest country in the world. He goes on this rampage of uh, giving data and it was so cool. And they speak so fast that for me, it was kind of hard to keep up. But still, it's a great journalism TV show. Nine. The Pacific is just like the second part of um, Brothers in Arms, which was a really iconic war TV show. This one is, takes place in the Pacific, and it's about how the US fought against uh, Imperial Japan. It's very gory, it's about brotherhood and war. It's, it's rather a mini-series than a TV show. I would say 8.5. Luther made me appreciate Idris Elba as an actor. He makes a great, great role as a detective in London. He has this long coat that he walks with all the time and amazingly cool. And this is a TV show that made me convinced that he would be a great James Bond. Seven. 30 Rock is one of those comedy TV shows that have uh, 20 or 30 minute episodes. It's one of the early, earliest like that that I've seen. It's with Tina Fey, who is amazing. One of oh, the I funniest, love Tina Fey too. One of the funniest women I've ever seen. And I like Baldwin as well. He does a great role. Eight. The Brink, I don't remember that much. I think it has only a few episodes and it's about preventing nuclear war. Jack Black is funny, but again, I don't remember this one as much. So I'm going to say 5.5. The Terror, first season was amazing. Remember it was shot in Hungary during the winter. It's about the ships that started from the UK and tried to find the Northern Passage to China, you know, um, which they didn't and they all died. It's horror and it's one of the best TV shows like that that I've seen. Second season, not very great. So 6.5. The plot against America is great historical fiction. This former pilot who was a, a fan of Adolf Hitler wins election in the United States and he keeps the United States out of the Second World War. He basically encourages uh, racism to propagate against uh, all kinds of minorities. It's also great TV. So nine. I don't know how many of you know the IT crowd. It's um, it's like the Big Bang Theory, but with British nerds, not Americans. And it has a few great lines that you will probably recognize. 8.5. This one I haven't seen, so I cannot comment. I don't know why it's on the list. I haven't seen it. I, I think I aspire to see it, <laughs> but it's very long, I remember. Uh, so I haven't seen it yet. Stranger Things. Have you seen it? Yeah, no, this is one of the few. I haven't seen the third season, but I, I, st I got stuck in the second one. I did love the first one, and the second one was worse, but it was still good. I think the third one, from what I've heard, it's bad. There is a trailer for the fourth season right now. I think it's out. I haven't seen it. First season, really great. Second season, okay, nice continuation. Third season, it let me down completely. I didn't like it. Seven. You know, there's one thing. I'm trying to convince him to watch Breaking Bad because it's one of those few shows that all seasons are good and he keeps on not watching Isn't it. Isn't it very long? Like It's five seasons, but it's worth watching. I will rewatch it entirely just if you watch it. Maybe at some point. It's really good. Have you seen Game of Thrones? It's too long. See? No. But it's not that long. It's not as long as Game of Thrones. It's okay, that long. Yeah, come on. Stargate SG-1 is old by now. I, I think it's older than most of you. <laughs> the acting is amazing. And I really grew attached to the characters in the 11 seasons or whatever it has. I loved it. I loved every minute of it. It's 8.5 for me. Card, I watched it out of curiosity and I regret doing it. Six. I cried at the end of Scrubs. I really cried because I was so attached to the characters that I couldn't imagine not watching seasons and seasons again or continue to watch them. It's, it's so funny 
the relationships that are presented and ev evolve in the TV show are what makes it great. 10. My mom watched this first and she pleaded with me to see it again and again and I finally did even though it's quite long and I didn't see the appeal first. It's about a gang of bikers that traffics in weapons in the United States in LA, and not in LA, in California. Eight. Parks and Rec. So we have Tina Fey in 30 Rock. This is uh, the equivalent of it, let's say. And it's just good fun. Um, nine. Space Force, I watched it for the main character. What's his name? Who's that guy? I've seen him in so many things. I forgot his name. I shouldn't remember his name. Steve, Steve Carroll. Very funny. He's one of the funniest uh, actors I've seen. But he doesn't really save this show because the writing is kind of bad. Six. Six. Mad Men is about these publicists that work on Madison Avenue in the 1960s and 70s, I think. And it's that time when men used to drink liters and liters of vodka at work and they so smoked in the planes. And the main character is one of the um, ones that I would use to showcase the fact that we like characters that are flawed nowadays. He has so many flaws, but you still love him because he's this totality of likable qualities. It's, it's something that I miss and I notice that it's lacking in many shows nowadays and movies even. 8.5. The Purge, I watched it because of the movies, of course. It surprised me with how violent and entertaining it was. I know it's The Purge, it's violent and entertaining, but the TV show, I didn't expect much from it. I was pleasantly surprised, 7.5. I love Doctor Who. I don't care who knows it, but last few seasons have been bad and that's because of the writers. The stories got worse and worse and they just recycled some themes. It pains me to do this, but I have to give it a seven. Man in the High Castle was produced after a book by Philip K. Dick, who used to get very high and write great science fiction. It's basically an alternate universe in which the Nazis and Imperial Japan won the Second World War and they divided uh, the US between themselves. I don't think you can see something like it on TV in 8.5. The Borgias is great historical drama. It has all of those, uh, all those good things, uh, plots, murders, incest, you know. Jeremy Irons is really great as the Pope. The rest of the characters aren't very convincing. Six. The Walking Dead started off great, is now on the 12th season or something, I've watched all of them, but it got worse and worse. Six. The Wire is amazingly great. It's one of those shows that maybe if you're younger you haven't heard of or certainly you haven't seen. It's basically about the crime scene in uh, Baltimore, early 2000s, and how some few good cops are fighting against a corrupt system and how politicians are trying to do their thing. 9.5. Prison Break was kind of repetitive to me. Sure, I mean, the writing was good and the plot made you watch episode after episode, but again, it kind of got too long. Seven. This is Dana's territory. <laughs> I liked the first season. The second was okay, the third one was already boring. But I liked the first season so much that I'm gonna get, I'm gonna say eight. This one I don't remember at all. Literally at all. That's usually a bad sign, like I said, so five. Avenue 5, I have to reference another show to explain it. It's like Veep, but in space. Hugh Laurie is brilliant in comedies, even though I know him as House, House MD. This one I found very amusing, even though it's very short, 7.5. Hot Girls Wanted. This was a documentary, this is not a series. It has multiple episodes. Oh, really? Uh, then... Yeah, it was kind of disappointing for me, to be honest. I wanted to see more of the industry. As I saw it, it ended with this idea that the industry, the porn industry, chews up and spits out girls constantly. And you just get used and get thrown afterwards and you're not appreciated enough. I wanted to know more about the inner workings of the industry, how it works, how the girls are recruited, and it does show you a bit of that, but I wanted more. So have you seen it? I've seen only one uh, documentary. I thought it was a documentary, I didn't know it was a whole show. And I just know that it disturbed me a lot. Six. Black Sails surprised me on how political it was. It's about pirate crews that make their own pirate republic. It was only about how characters change positions of power among the, each other. I'm gonna say nine. Seinfeld is hands down my favorite comedy TV show. I know it's old. It was shot in the 90s. I watched it later on. I just discovered it flipping on the TV and I picked it up and although it's quite long, I watched all of it. To this day, I haven't watched the last episode where they pack the set up and they all say goodbye and you know, I haven't watched it. I, I can't. 
I cannot convince myself that it's over. I, I loved it. I'm gonna give it a 10. Catch 22. This show was carried by the, the actor that interpreted the main character. He expressed the, the cruelty of war and the nonsense that war is, but he also was the main, um, he was the heart of the, the comedic parts of it. It's after this amazing book, but the TV show is great as well. Eight. Battlestar Galactica is a classic sci-fi show. I think it's quite old by now, it has more than 10 years. I haven't seen all of it, surprisingly, because it's quite long, but I've seen most of it. Eight. Handmaid's Tale started really great. First two seasons were amazing. The idea was quite novel. It was topical as well with the conservatives in the US being on the rise. But the last few seasons that I watched were again repetitive. The same thing happens over again. She escapes, she is caught, she's forgiven, she does something, she escapes again, she is caught, she's forgiven. Same thing happens over and over again. I, I find it boring. Six. The Sopranos are classic mob TV show. It's about a mob boss interpreted by James Gandolfini who goes to see a therapist. He's so human, he's so flawed, he's so great because you love him but he's a mob boss that you just cannot help uh, enjoying the TV show. Okay, I'm gonna give it a 10. Passing Bells, mini series about war, First World War I think. I don't remember it that much. So five. The Mandalorian, the TV show that saved the franchise of Star Wars. They invested money in the show, you, you can tell about the, that from the special effects. I love the main character, I love the fact that the actor was okay with playing his part with his helmet on, uh, but I loved it. 9.5, 9.5. The bodyguard is with uh, Rob Stark from Game of Thrones, and he basically has to defend the Minister of Defense in England, who is this very fiery politician. It was really enjoyable, and there are some twists in there that are really, really enjoyable as well. 8. There's a lot to be said about Game of Thrones. There are entire channels on YouTube dedicated to Game of Thrones. Like everyone who has uh, watched it and loved it, I despised what they did with the last show, with the last season. So I'm gonna give it a um, 9. Just because of that. Spy TV show based in Britain. I would not watch, to be honest. So 5. Rome was one of the first TV shows that I've ever seen. It started when I was really young, early 2000s, and it was quite sexual. Props to HBO for running it. It's historical drama, but it's really well done. Eight. Black Mirror, really great first seasons. Last one, kind of disappointing. What do you think? Uh, okay, I, I enjoyed the last one. It's not that I think it's bad, but it's bad for Black Mirror. It's like it yeah. increased. If it was another show, I might say that it's good, but since it's Black Mirror and they brought better before, like way better seasons, it felt disappointing me because of that. The ideas were not as daring, I don't know, it just... I do think it would be unfair to give it a bad grade just because of the last season, like, it has really great ideas in there, so you should see it. 9, I'm gonna say 9. Barbarians Rising is this docudrama, I think they're called, so dramatized historical documentaries, like the stuff you would see on History Channel, so 7. I read American Gods. It's a great book. You should definitely buy it and read it because it's amazing. But the TV show is utter trash. It's hot trash. I, I know the writer uh, promotes it because he likes it apparently, but the TV show is so complete trash. It should have one season and it should end with one season. And they keep stretching it out to like four seasons, I think and it just gets worse and worse. Each season, I think it can go worse than this. It can be worse than this. It, it's, this is the lowest it can reach, but then it goes lower. It's so bad, don't watch it. Three. But this one is already a movie. So if you wanna save time, watch the movie and then watch season two. And then you get a whole picture. So watch The Golden Compass, that's the name of the movie, and watch season two of this show. Because season one is basically the movie. And it's quite a fantasy that's fit for children, mostly. 5.5. Watchmen. I, I saw the movie um, and then I watched the TV show and then I wanted to read more. I wanted to know about the comics and the world that it takes place in. It was really intriguing. 7.5. This one is about a cult that committed mass suicide, I think, in Texas. I think you know more about this. Yeah, it's that's one of the doomsday cults. It was, it was pretty entertaining and inspired by true events that adds a new dimension to it. Let's say 7. I love this show. I know you don't like it. No, I hate it. But I found it, like, every time I would watch it, I couldn't help chuckle at the funny bit. I know this is an unpopular opinion, it's, it's not cool to like this show, but I loved it. I couldn't help it. I loved it. I liked no, it. No, I will say it's more unpopular to not like it. I think yeah. on the unpopular side. Well, maybe, you know, this is the thing. It was unpopular until 
pop culture detective did a whole analysis on this. After after pop culture detective put a word why we don't like this show. Is it because it's sexist or something like that, right? It partially, yeah, partially. Uh, Not okay. completely. It might be, but I haven't seen that video and I never saw it like that. I just enjoyed the nerdiness. Finally, nerds were being cool. And yeah, that's it, what it I... It has its good things. Like, saying that it didn't change, let's say, a little bit the perspective on nerdiness, it's it will be a lie. I like the main character Sheldon a lot. I like his relationship with his best friend. It did kind of uh, drag on too long. It was 12 seasons if I'm not wrong, but it was still enjoyable. Unlike other shows that drag on that long, it was still I could still laugh uh, even at the end. So nine. Gallipoli is a historical docudrama about the war, First World War in Turkey. It's an area that I think is quite forgotten when it comes to the First World War and how it's being represented in uh, memory. Watch it if you like the genre. 7. 4400. Basically about this number of people that disappear from the world and they appear later on and no one knows where they've been and this entire mystery of uh, how to reintegrate them or how to interpret their absence. And they, they obtain powers in the later seasons, I think, and they become special in some way. And some of them go crazy, homicidal. It was kind of weird, 6.5. The Deuce, I don't know how how historical it was. It was basically about how this central part of New York was transformed from a platform for prostitution and drugs into this fancy high-end, uh, you know, location for going out. And uh, James Franco plays two twins in this one. And I think he's also financing and directing it. It's very strong. I would say eight. Dark, German, fucks with your mind. Nine. It's really great. I want to watch this one. I haven't watched it because I'm lazy, but this is one of the ones that I really want to watch. Last season just messes with your mind. So I imagine they sat at the table and ju they just decided, let's fuck with people. Because that's the only way I can explain it. But it's great. Firefly, classic sci-fi. I started out suspicious of it. I was like, why do people love it so much? But it's amazing. Nine. What if I just finished this recently? It's really great animation. So it, after you've seen the whole MCU movies, you are, so you are already familiar with the characters, you watch this and it's pure entertainment. Eight. Frozen Planet, it's a documentary about the Arctic and the Antarctic, if I'm not mistaken. I watched it years ago. Six. The Witcher, the Witcher, I'm kind of, I don't want to grade it just yet. I want to see more of it because the first season was underfinanced a little bit, I think, and they still made it pretty great. Henry Cavill makes a great role. I want to play still. the games. I haven't played the game or read the book. Devs fucks with your mind, seriously, but in a good way. Nine. Falcon and the Winter Soldier was disappointing. It was disappointing because it had, I don't, the villains in it were disappointing. They were too little. I expected more from Marvel. Seven, 6.5. <sighs> this was great before everything, before the, the... It's like, it was such a great show that was ruined by that guy. You've seen it? No, I haven't, but I've heard things. Like... So if you were studying political science like I was back then and still am, you wanted to be the main character. Uh, the way he talked to the camera, to the audience directly, you know, and the words stopped, it was really great. I don't know, it, it gave you this feeling that it was something special. But, you know. It got ruined by the actor. <laughs> yeah. If you can disentangle the actor from the TV show, it's a good TV show. So that's why I would give it an 8. But if you can't, you can't. Don't watch it. Vikings went on for too long. It should have ended when Ragnar died. You gave a major spoiler there. No, it's historical. Everyone knows he dies. <laughs> Come on. Uh, 9, I would say, for Vikings. Ozark for a net... <laughs> For a Netflix show, it's pretty good. It's really great. Um, Jason Bateman makes a great role as this accountant that works for the cartel. He convinces you of his desperation and his need to do everything right and how constant he is. He's a great character, morally great. Everyone is morally great. So it's usually an indication of the quality of this. Uh, 8.5. Nightfall was about the Templars. It's a documentary, it's made by history. Uh, it's pretty, it's pretty okay, seven. What, what is that? Masters of Horror. I think it's a compilation of directors that made one episode each, some classic horror story. I don't remember it, five. The Family on Netflix was about how religion gets intermixed with politics, not only in the US, mainly in the US, but they also talked about Romania. 
and the connections that politicians and members of the community of faith from over there have here. I saw some very familiar faces from the politicians of Romania and it was shocking uh, because I, I didn't think of it like that. Just because of the revelations, I'm gonna give it a 7.5. Modern Family is amazing. It's one of my favorite comedy TV shows. So I would say it's Seinfeld, Scrubs, Modern Family. I got so attached to the characters. I didn't cry at the end, but I was close. I got so attached to the characters and they're also lovable and crazy. So sorry that it ended. I somehow wanted it to go on and on. The Outsider is a lot like Twin Peaks. I think it's by Stephen King. I'm not sure. It's quite creepy. Don't watch it alone in the dark. Eight. Fortitude is a lot like Helix, this virus that spreads in a remote community in Alaska if I'm not sure, if I'm not mistaken. It starts very reasonably, but then it becomes really crazy. 7. Suburgatory is about this teenage girl that cannot bear living in the suburbs with her crazy dad and uh, neighbors. It tries to be a lot like other TV shows, but it doesn't manage to. 6.5. This one was surprisingly good. I thought it was just some superhero bullshit, but it's really enjoyable. Eight. This one was some underfinanced Marvel project about the lower second tier, third tier uh, heroes. Don't watch this one, it's like four. <laughs> uh, this one. So you have to know a bit about American politics to enjoy this one. This is amazing. It's great. It's, it, this is the best, the most entertaining <laughs> thing I've seen in my whole life. I love it. Uh, I'm gonna give it a 7.5 though. I will give it an 8 just because not, it makes me happy. It, it, it's just like it, it's... Not it, everyone can enjoy it, but it's, it's frightening at the same... It's funny, but it's frightening. <laughs> you know, I will give it a higher rate, but I think it comes from the fact that I watched it while I was drunk. <laughs> It was more entertaining like that. That does affect your perception. <laughs> Hugh Grant is very funny. I don't know if you know this. And in this TV show, which is not very long, it's a few episodes, he interprets this liberal party leader, Jeremy Thorpe, and he has a bit of a public scandal. Uh, it's pretty enjoyable. Watch it. Seven. This one is so militaristic. This is the only word I can use to describe it. An alien invasion, people rise up and fight it. The army doesn't feature, it's more of a militia who fights the aliens, but it's so militaristic, like it's so, not even patriotic, it goes beyond the US, it's just so violent. Violence for violence sake. I enjoyed it. <laughs> Sometimes you have to watch some of this, so seven. Tell me a story is about a classic, how do you say Basma? Classic fairy stories or? Fairy tales. Fairy, yeah, fairy tales that are reinterpreted and made into a modern environment, let's say. So you have Little Red Riding Hood going to a club and meeting the wolf there. Six. I know this much is true. I watched it with my mom. It breaks you. Like, it. it's so sad. It's just so sad. Nine. Dracula, this is a patriotic thing to me. Eh, seven. This is a hidden gem. Watch it. Nine. And then there were none, it's pretty classic, Agatha Christie, plus six. Alter Carbon started really great. First season was like the book, and I read the books as well. But then it just, I didn't like where it went. Seven. Have you seen this? Oh my god. You've seen this? I know uh, what it's about. I, I thought it was a documentary. It's a whole series? Yeah. Oh my god, I, I know what it's about and I decided to not watch it because I don't think I can handle it. But it shows you the power of the internet, I think. I don't know, I know cats die, I don't want to watch Yeah, them. right at the beginning. Seven, seven. <sighs> Have you seen this? Ever? Oh yeah. I, I've seen not, I haven't finished it, but I've seen episodes. It's I, funny. So it's funny. And it's sad. And you sad probably time. saw the first seasons. It's funny and sad. It dragged on for too long and it became so boring and repetitive. And you started to not hate the characters, but not very far off either. It was disappointing. I remember it had two endings, if I'm not mistaken, because the fans hated the original ending so much that everyone kind of demanded another one. It was disappointing. The ending was disappointing. Six. Philip K. Dick's Electric Dreams. I remember the book. I don't remember this, so five. Human is, I wouldn't say a documentary. It's very close up shots with people from all over the world. They tell you about their story, their lives and how they perceive love and children and future and you know, their community. It's very personal, very human. Nine. This was action packed and uh, the actor does a lot of heavy lifting in this TV show and I loved it. Eight. Night Flyers is after George R. R. Martin's uh, book. I don't remember. Five. K 
Caprica was a spin-off from Battlestar Galactica. It's eh, if you've seen Battlestar Galactica and you've loved it, you can watch this as well. If not, don't. Six. Be Foreigners was a very smart a social critique. It's basically about how people are transported from the past to modern day Norway and they have to integrate. So they're foreigners, but they're from before. Be Foreigners. The main characters are detectives who have to interact with these, these communities and make them get along. And um, the woman detective is Viking. It's really funny. It's funny and deep at the same time. It was something else. Nine. In Fargo, every season is a different story. The cast changes, the, the plot changes. Um, it's recognized to be funny in every season. So you can enjoy every season, but you can also take breaks between them because you don't need that continuity. Eight. It's about the Twin Towers that fell, but I don't remember it. I remember the main character. Six. The, the middle was really funny. It's in the same vein as Scrubs and Modern Family. Closer to Modern Family. Uh, watch it. 8.5. Billions, I just finished the last season. It's about an investor and a prosecutor who wants to catch him doing something illegal. The two main characters and the actors are really great and they make the whole TV show basically um, eight. Carnival Row didn't have the chance yet to expand itself. It's really great fantasy. I haven't seen anything like it. It's with fairies, industrialized England of the 19th century. And the combination is really something special. Nine. I expected more from Mr. Robot, not this blatant nihilism that it ended up with. And the plot went into different places and it didn't reconcile the whole story. Seven. Sherlock. First seasons were great. Latter ones, eh. Eight. I love Eddie Redmayne, but I don't remember this for the life of me. So, five. Uh, Lebony Snicket's unfortunate series of events is for children. I didn't know this when I started watching it, but I had to finish it. I don't know how long it was, but it's too long. It's for children. Seven. I don't know. Tom Hardy is a great, great actor and he makes this TV show. Nine. Alien Invasion again, but they first present themselves as, as our friends. What was that? That was your ear? You heard it. I heard it. Okay, it wasn't my ear then. It was the sound that existed. <laughs> so your ear didn't make that noise? No. I don't really remember it aside from a few bits. 5.5. I love I Oscar Isaac. He's gonna be in Dune. Uh, in this show, he's a young mayor who is elected and has to uh, integrate people of color into communities that were white and refused people of color before. And it's a really unpopular decision because of the racism back then. But he still does it. And then he gets the punishment for it. But he does it because that's what heroes do. I think I ruined it. It's, it's a mini series almost. So watch it. Eight. It's a sci-fi, what do you call these? Like a sci-fi police series. Uh, criminal sci-fi. It's a criminal sci-fi. So the main character comes... I don't know if that's the term. I just invented it. <laughs> criminal sci-fi. Main character is a policewoman. She comes back from a future where Amazon basically is a state. Uh, not Amazon, but you know, corporations. And she comes back chasing this Marxist terrorist group. Seven. First season of True Detective is the best TV. Is the best TV you can ever see. First season. It's Woody Harrelson, the Matthew McConaughey, and they're detectives and in Louisiana, I think. And it's that grim southern atmosphere intermixed with crime. It's so great. Other seasons, also great. Not as great as first one. 9.5. Gotham, I watched all of it, even though it felt like eight seasons. What? I didn't mind it. It's pretty good. Eight. Dirk Gently's Holistic Detective Agency is bad. Don't watch it. Fine. Uh, Westworld, first few seasons I enjoyed. Then it ha somehow became smaller. Too small. Seven. Forever is about this curator that lives forever and he's trying to find stuff about himself because he keeps forgetting. Six. Public Morals, again, uh, a mob TV show that didn't go past the first season, but it was okay. 6.5. <laughs> this was too long. <laughs> it went on for so long that I matured in the meantime. Ah, it's, it's bad, but it's good, if you know what I mean. I don't know, 7.5, 8? 8.5, something like that. It depends a lot. Brain that was amazing. So every political science student should watch this. It's about uh, worms from space that get burrowed into the heads of politicians in Washington and they make them more fanatical, more extremist. It's, it was amazingly funny. Uh, 7.5. Gunpowder, disappointing. 6. 
lied to me i watched a long time ago it's about this guy who basically can tell if you lie or not by the micro expressions you have so it's kind of like a police show but six love death and robots first season amazing second season bad seven i just watched some of the first season it's quite good it's true they're short they're short they're like seven minutes so i watched joey which is a spin-off from friends without knowing about friends but i love joey i love matthew leblanc i would watch it again honestly it's 7.5 Krypton is about the home planet of Superman and what went on there before its destruction. Six. Invincible, I know a lot of people loved it, but it was so grim. I don't know. I expected something a bit more, not uplifting necessarily. It wasn't uplifting, but it wasn't the morally grayness that you expect when it's not uplifting, if you know what I mean. Seven. The Night Of is really short. It's about the crime, how, how people rush to conclusions and how wrong they can be. Seven. <laughs> Comrade Detective, it takes place in Romania, but it's fully in English. And the actor that plays the main character, the main detective, is the son of a great Romanian actor. And they look exactly the same, which was very freaky to me, but it's entertaining. It's funny. Uh, 8.5. The Expanse is one of the great modern TV shows with science fiction. So it's the modern Gal Battlestar Galactica. 8.5. Brave New World, you must know the book by Aldous Huxley. And this was a great interpretation. Nine. Oh, this has a show? Yeah, and it's oh pretty good. God. It's pretty good. I read this when I was 15. I didn't even have a Let's show. Let's say 8.7, not 9. 8.7. It's pretty good. I want to watch it. I'm very curious. Yeah, it is short as well. Mob City. I feel like I've seen this before in this uh, in this list. Again, didn't go past first season six. Patrick Melrose is traumatizing. It's traumatizing. Seven. Stargate Atlantis, like Stargate SG-1, one of the best old sci-fi shows. 8.5. Fringe, you might have not heard about this one. It's quite old. It's freakishly good if you like police and sci-fi and Stephen King type of TV shows. 7.5. Raising Hope is a lot like Modern Family. Not as good as Modern Family, but it's the next best thing. So, 7. I don't remember this one. 5. Homeland started off great. First two seasons are really great. Then it had a few kind of good not very bad, but that the ending became good as well. Eight. The Promise is about Israel. Watch it. Seven. Babylon Berlin is about Germany in the 1930s and it's special. Something that you haven't seen before. I'm gonna give it a nine. Kind of low budget, but the actors really tried their best. So, seven. I don't know about this one. What do you think? What, what grade would you say? Okay, we watched this together. This is why he's asking me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I liked it. I think this showed that Joey King is more than the kissing booth. I like the beginning of the show and the middles, but I don't like the ending. I don't know how. I know it's based on real events, but I don't know. I didn't like the ending. I, I think, I don't know, get some creative license there. Six. I would put it a 6.5 6 or 7. I don't remember it. Five. Perry Mason, crime TV show made by HBO. A lot of money put in unknown actor but he still did a pretty good job eight here the walking dead is like worse walking dead so six i only saw the first season premise is amazingly good it's basically a world in which everyone is blind and there are armies of blind people so how do you do that like how do you write about that i don't know it was great 7.5 kidding is funny and heartbreaking at the same time eight john adams great historical drama seven I couldn't finish this one because my stomach became too sensitive to watch it. Mads Mikkelsen, who interprets Hannibal in this one, is a great actor. I just want to say that. But oh, yeah. I can't grade the show. I haven't seen all of it. Stephen King's universe and all that goes on into it. The minor stories more like, let's say, 6.5. Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell, I also read the book. This doesn't happen very often, but the show is exactly like the book. It's good because of that. 7.5. I think this is a documentary about the mob. Uh, 6. Texas Rising taught me a bit about the history of Texas. I hope it's historical. For me, it became lodged into my brain as actual history. And I enjoyed Brendan Fraser in it uh, because I love him. 7. No, 6.5. Literally just finished this a week ago. Watch it with my mom again. The first two seasons. They don't make shows like that anymore. It's so strange. But good. 9. There's a war and they have kingdoms and there's the world ending and somehow nukes are involved. Archangels as well. Six. Deadliest Catch is my guilty pleasure. Crab Fisherman in Alaska. I've watched probably 20 seasons of this. I'm not kidding. Every season has 20 episodes as well and it's like an hour long. But in the winter, I love cuddling in bed and just watching this. Yeah, we do that. 
it's so great, but it gives you seasickness. I'm very biased for this show. I'm gonna give it a nine. The Office, The Office, The Office, 10. Great. 10. <laughs> I love it too. I don't remember it very well, but the writer of the book, which inspired this show, and the two actors are amazing. You have Loki there and Dr. House, like, come on. But I don't remember it that much. I have to rewatch it. I'm gonna say seven for now. Boardwalk Empire is about the Prohibition era, eight. Veep is funny and it's full of curse words, full of curse words. But she was also in Seinfeld. She's amazing. She's amazing. Eight. Yeah, I don't remember. Five. I don't remember. The loudest voice is about the founder of Fox News. Disgusting. <laughs> Disgusting. But it's interpreted, he's interpreted by Russell Crowe. He makes a really convincing character. Eight. Eight. It was popular and probably, you have probably seen it. I watched it later on because I'm a hipster. Nine. <laughs> I haven't seen all of this or even most of this, but it's funny. Oh yeah, this is funny. I don't know what grade I should, I, it's, it's like, I don't... It's so much of a cult classic yeah. to grade it. Yeah, I don't remember it. Five. This one is also a book by Stephen King. It involves time travel. James Franco is great in this. Seven. That's the last one! Is the last the one? last one, yes, I can leave. <laughs> <laughs> this is the list. You can find it on IMDb as well. I'm gonna put the link of 168 TV shows that I've seen in seven years. I also have a list of 760 movies that I've seen in the same period. You're gonna make me sit here and <laughs> scroll in the...